Tabi. Oh, she's gonna go for the Mario here in this matchup. And is this a button check? No, we are, no, we are fighting. Going in. We are duking it out. So I think I kind of agree with this because Duck Hunt kind of plays a very similar game to the Belmonts of just setting up these lanes of set play that you have to contend with. And, you know, the, uh, the projectiles of Belmont are going to disrupt Fawn's game plan quite a lot. So instead, opting for this more rushdown game plan of Mario, just using that that one single fireball is all you need to get in and get that combo damage. And also, not to mention, we have the cape. You know, mm -hmm. if you oh, can time the reflector, it, yes. yeah, exactly the reflector. So if you can time it pretty perfectly, you can pretty much avoid a lot of situations with the re grab into the holy fire. I mean, sorry, holy water into you know the the whip. It's just enough. The back air is enough. Yeah, Fawn, unfortunately, going to have to get a little bit more creative when it comes to getting off ledge against Belmont. Once again, the cross boomerang coming through, even when Fawn had the stage positioning and the potential for an edge guard. Just for, like, context, say, for anyone just tuning in, the 5-0 does not mean this is, like, game 6. This means that there's oh, a yeah. timer for the holy water. This is the take this counter. <laughs> just, so, just so you guys know. However... Finally, we're going back to an even game. We have one, two to two right now, and honestly, the fact that Fawn is really bringing it pre uh, pretty even with the rush down Mario that you were talking about so well is working out relatively okay so far. Gotta take this. We got two of them in a row. Trying to go for another down smash, and I really wish we would go for the forward smash instead. Yeah, maybe trying to read an air dodge in instead of reacting to Fawn kind of mm -hmm. SDIing upward. All right, now Fawn getting that one grab. This is really all she needs. Yeah, you oh. can air dodge all you like. The, the keep punishment will co will continue. All right, Dash, I can be saving Melly for a second there, but narrowly avoiding the holy water there allows for the back here to come through. Fawn keeping it a lot more toe to toe with Melly here, especially because we only had two minutes, about two minutes go by, and this game has become a little bit more scary for Melly to deal with now that we can't really. Um, Trap oh our opponent God. that you died? They just exploded? You died? I didn't think you would die. Yeah, that must have been some uh, not great DI. Fortunately, getting caught by the holy water once again. Fauna having trouble finding her way in this neutral. Finally, seeing that cape that you were talking about before come out. We haven't really been seeing it so far, and Melly has, in fact, been respecting it. We haven't been seeing very many axes or cross boomerangs. It's been mostly holy waters and normals. Even better for our for our counter, isn't it right? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh! There we go. The that was The lingering fire. neutral air, just such a good tether killer. All right. Lo also, the, the long standing here, the Nair, also helps a lot in these situations. So the Backup. But do you really want that, though? It's a real question. Okay, right, charging up Flood a little bit here. And I want, I think Fawn's is really trying to get Melly into the blast zone as fast as possible. And I can definitely see a, you know, just grab, back throw, and then just, if Melly goes for the up B or any kind of tether recovery, go for the Flood. However, Melly is bringing it right back into his favor very, very convincingly, going in for the Holy Water once more. And as you said, not too much axes, not too much uh, Holy Crosses either. Yeah, it's been mostly when Melly knows that it is safe to do so, but now putting himself at the ledge, very scary position against Fawn, but just oh. this boxing has just been so good with the whip. You know, Mario is a rushdown character, but he does tend to struggle with sword-like characters, and it is it is a whip, but it's basically a sword with that F-tilt. It's a, it's a Sephiroth sword. Yeah. At this point... Do you think we're going to see a character swap from Fawn? If we go Duck Hunt, probably. That's the only character I can even imagine. Unless we go as random, we have a little bit of fun. But <laughs> against against Belmont like this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, against Melly's Belmont, where you're playing, I'll be a little bit differently because definitely between this set and Numbers' set with Melly, definitely a little bit play, different play style. Mm -hmm. Same core <laughs> idea, but just have to adjust, adjust some things here and there. We're going for base Mario, by the way. We're staying the Mario, the Mario. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, trying to make it work. The tuxedo has come off. We are back into our work clothes as Fawn is looking to put in this work in game two. We gotta get the plumbing done. We got oh, okay. I got so scared for a second, but I forget about jump. So we're all we are all fine and dandy. Fawn is gonna be trying to take a lot more center stage control away from Melly, and that's where Melly really, really shines is when he has either uh, ledge control or center stage control, which is not too far from each other, but it's enough for Melly to really dominate the space, even the platforms, dominate the main stage, dominate the air, dominate everywhere.
Yeah, but we're seeing even when Fawn gets oh, wow. that positional advantage, gets up into Melly's face, like, Melly still has the tools to fight his way out. We already saw that reversal, uh, the uppercut, as well as the down tilt to reset the positioning. Like, Fawn cannot get too comfortable once she gets in, but Melly nice. just going a little bit too low, maybe didn't have the double jump or something. Not quite sure what happened there. I think he was definitely, because Fawn was definitely following him yeah. down into Blasso, so he was trying to avoid her by the same time, try not to go too low into Blasso for it to work anyway, and unfortunately, it worked in favor of Fawn. But Fawn being at 130%, not going to be the worst thing in the world against Melly because of the fact that he's probably going to get, oh, got the sour spot, letting Fawn live a little bit longer. Yeah, Fawn now with the first lead that we've seen this set, looking to start something off with these up airs into the neutral airs, but Melly still falling out. Holy Water coming through, wow. keeping Melly safe. No long combos here for Fawn. Well, going for back air, trying to go for nice so these tilts, but Fawn is able to kind of maneuver around them a little bit nicely, going in for the nair and trying to get these up air conversions like you're talking about, but. I think Melly's just really on top of these things. See, you saw the cape come out. So Melly's starting to be a little more aware that, okay, she's going to be going for it, but they're going to be going for a little more of that cape action. It's going to be a little more sparing with my projectiles and utilize more of my actual whip. I really do love the way that Fawn has been angling her shield this whole time towards Melly, just trying to make things <gasps> a little bit safer. No way. At 50? At oh. 50. Oh. Oh. Well, that was really good, I can't lie. Just catching Fawn really, that high up as well with the up B, it was just guaranteed going to a blast zone. Yeah. I get the stock super, super early. Unfortunate. Fantastic awareness from Melly in order to get that. The cape, unfortunately, not quite working out for Fawn, not finding the holy water. Oh. Ooh, maybe a little bit of Fawn's own medicine there with getting thrown into the projectile. Oh, there's the, pro yeah, there's the reflex. It. Yippee, but... <laughs> It didn't really give much substance, and I think this is, yeah, this is. It's not looking too good for Fawn mm -hmm. right now. The axe going right through the fireball. The one option Fawn had to try and find herself some space from this ledge, but you are back at ledge once again against Belmont. All the roll going through and actually allowing her to get back on stage finally, but I don't think was able to go that in time. Didn't get any punish active. Even then, the up air off of, uh, after the roll in, not going to be enough. Fawn is getting a little bit, a little bit too yeah. far off stage, a little bit too often. We're seeing some head shakes come out from Fawn. Definitely a frustrating experience getting shield poked right there from that dash attack. That shield looking mad low. But the fireballs are coming out a little more here. Oh. Oh, I think it was definitely trying to be to roll in from the ledge with that fo with the, uh, with the forest smash, but it's gonna be enough. We to get them back off stage. All right, Melly going, uh, trying to tether back. What do we do? Roll right through, and we absolutely do. I do love the patience from Melly, not getting oh. caught by the fireball on the tether. All right, soft yep. F tilt, resetting the situation, and any forward oh, or back air fast. will be doing it. But instead, it's going to be Fawn's back air taking the next stock. Fawn's at 171%, by the way. As well, as well, I'm just real fast. We, we do have full rage online if Fawn's able to get something into, like, a Mario Tornado. Oh, but... Uh committed a little bit too hard to reflecting the uh, the axe and just ran out of resources. And it's going to be Melly taking it 2-0 over Fawn in order to find his way into Grands. What was the final timer? I didn't get to see. Uh, Connor, I didn't get to see. Uh, 29. Wow, 29. take me 29. Oh, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> disgusting. Nah, delete that replay. I felt so bad. Only dying at what? You said 50%, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was like 50% before the hit. Yeah. And here was where Bongo 140 Reflector Reflector hit the holy water, but that was... Yeah. It, it was so unfortunate, too, because Fawn was really starting to cook at the beginning of game two, mm -hmm. but that one, like, super early kill was just all it took to, to seal it. All right, looks like we do have both of our remaining losers. Uh, oh, they're playing right happening. now. Yeah. Oh, yes. 11 o'clock, you know. Yeah. Yay. Yippee. All right. Um, are we? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have any other matches to, uh, to oh, watch no, right now. Oh, no. It's just them two and yeah, then whoever's these two, winners. Then, or grants. like, the winner of these two matches fight, and then whoever wins that Go fights Fawn, and then Melly. I forgot about Fawn being a loser. <laughs> Fawn was I just here. I completely forgot. I'm horrible. I forget record very easily. Okay. Um, are we able to just pick one? I kind of want to yeah. see Raptor Mystery because it's not about to end in two seconds. 
Uh, which one? Raptor Mystery. 21. Sure. 21. Yoink. Oh, that worked. <laughs> <laughs> it's like magic. Mm, yoink. All right, Raptor and Mr. E going over here on Town and City. Raptor, um, I'm not going to say that they're not really in a clear advantage disadvantage. I feel like they're both at anything could really happen here. Mm -hmm. um, especially with Mr. E off stage like this. But the platforms do help him when they come back off on stage. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, Yoshi, kind of another one of those characters that does traditionally struggle against sword characters. Yes. And Mr. E, one of the best when it comes to Lucina. I mean, if not the best, I can't even lie. I, the, the movement, the fundamentals, the uh, the will to play Lucina, even her worst kind of matchups. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very good player. Yeah. We, were, we were talking about it earlier. Earlier on in the stream, I think uh, Proto Banham still considered the like the number one Lucina. Oh yes, but like Mister E, like he's not too far behind. Okay, trying to go for the air. You see both players go for the air out shield, but it's gonna be uh, Mister E beating that situation out. It's gonna be Raptor gonna be in the hot seat as we see him having to you know kind of scramble a little bit. The, sp the space does favor Yoshi a little bit because you have so much space to work around with. You have you can get away, you can use egg uh, egg toss. Kind of mixed space.